The flogcast may occasionally contain explicit content that makes it not safe for work or for minors. It also doesn't provide an excuse to use the same words on Bay 13. Normal Bigfooty rules still apply. for round 22. Hosting is Cookie, and joining us in a relatively short cast, we have Dan. We're desperate. No one wants to come on anymore. Yeah, also joining us is Penal. Oh, yeah. just, to, just to clarify, when Cookie says short, he means short in numbers, not in terms of stature, because Starburns and Jose aren't here. Yeah, it's, it's the tallest vlogcast for quite a while. The average height of all time. With the exception of the uh, standard... Um, usual host, we have a, a no midget policy in place. It's kind of like the no homers treehouse in The Simpsons. And I suppose we'll start out with Goo and Tears, and well, he wants to go first. Oh, I'll uh, I'll go with some tears this week. Fucking tears for the Richmond Football Club and their sad, <laughs> pathetic existence. That sounds like tears laced in, in goo. No, no, no. It's it's definitely tears for me because, well, for yeah. one, Geelong fucking won, and no one likes that. And secondly, I thought I'd be big funny, man, and try and bump a thread on the main board and be all like, Geelong are so shit, lol, and uh, try and troll and get some uh, bites from the Geelong supporters. So I did this at three-quarter time when Richmond is six goals up. And I was like, yeah, there's no way they can possibly fuck this up. And they still fucked it up. So I had egg all over my face. Thank you, Richmond. And, like, the only thing Richmond are fucking good at now is being an advertisement for postnatal abortion. And it's, 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 instead of drumsticks, I would like to see the KFC boys start throwing coat hangers at Richmond players like fucking Vickery and Ellis and all those. Oh, Dan, do you want to go or do you want me to go? Oh, you go. I'm going to start with, well, I'm going to go for it's kind, of, it's kind of goo and tears at the same time, because I have to admit I'm wrong about a certain player, and that player is still Rioli. Yeah, that's, I thought he was overrated as shit. Dice have been, but not nah, he's top ten player in the comp. Oh, that's a bit excessive. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but it's probably correct. Well, I'm on the I mean... Rioli wagon, and I don't think he's a top ten player. Oh, he's he's definitely top ten in the in the competition now, like on on this year's form. The issue was obviously yeah, a lot of people thought he was overrated because um, a lot of people had him top ten in their list before this year, and he was probably just a little too inconsistent. But um, on this year's output, he's just been phenomenal. Like it's gone up another level. The only issue with Cyril is the commentary goo fest that accompanies with him, but that's not his that's fault. That's not his fault. If you know. Anyway, on to Dan, your goo or tears. Um, oh, gosh. What, what can be my thing this week? Um, oh, tears. The last two weeks, North scoring has been Frio-esque. We scored 57 points over the weekend. I just click back what we did the week before. 47 points against the Western Bulldogs. That's just woeful. Fucking woeful. And I don't know if this is tears or not, but we are influencing match committee selection at Hawthorne Football Club based on last week's vlogcast. There is no doubt that Hawthorne are listening and they're acting on on our chat. The uh, the selection of uh, Burton for his first right. game nicely yes. coincided with uh, me pumping him up last week. It's not it's not a coincidence. They've acted on it, and I don't know whether that's a good thing or or a bad thing. But he nearly he nearly kicked a goal in the first thirty seconds of the game, and I'm like, oh my god, 
This is just, just, this is not happening. Um, I think he went all right though. I think he kicked the goal and. Yeah, he um he did all right. He kicked one goal two and um, yeah, on another day he could have had three, which would have been obviously great. But he he did enough, I reckon. And do you I follow hope... the box, do you follow the Box Hill Hawks panel? Um, did he I... four their no, I... one selection? Yes, it did. I think, from memory, he um, something like fifteen and three for the week before in the in the VFL, and with um, Sicily obviously getting suspended and the other guy O'Brien out of form, he definitely earned his place, and I think he should deserve to keep it ahead of uh, O'Brien sure. Ranger in the twenty-three. Okay. Anyways, Jed Anderson is still ahead of him. I, oh, he had he had a few bad moments, but then he had a f- one or two good things that he did. Yeah. Certainly, certainly long term, I know who I'd rather have on on the list. Uh, uh, but yeah, <coughs> let's let's acknowledge for the, for a moment that uh, Ryan Burton, I think he's the best uh, number thirty five in the comp. Just <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll agree with who that. Who are the other thirty fives in the comp? <laughs> yeah, I'll just um have a look at some of the team lists. There's I no mean, one we- is there. Is West Coast have it? fucking West Coast have fucking Patrick McGinnity. I mean, he's a he's a potato. Yeah, he's All a potato. Right? Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. Uh, Ours is Josh Saunders, who is a potato. He can run fast. Yeah, what about North? I couldn't tell you who thirty five was at North. Oh, that better not be a good it's player. Like, shit. <laughs> um, it's like Bertrand does someone like that. Turner. It could be Turner. Yeah. Trying to find out. Hang on. 35. Aaron Black. Oh, God. He's hopeless. He can't get a game. Let's see. Adelaide's is... Wig. I don't, has he played a game? Probably not. See, the only the only decent, half-decent one I can think of is Caleb Daniel. But other than that, just... Oh, this, this, that kid's going to get the NAB Rising Star Award this year. Yeah, that's why I'm saying he's, he's the only sort of competition. But um, the, the rest he's, of them... Uh, Penal, he's I'm, miles ahead. He's going to win that award. Yeah, Ryan he's, Burton played one he's, game of football. He's good, right? Caleb Daniel is good. We'll, we'll acknowledge that. This is about the other 15, sorry, 16. You've got yeah. two good ones, Burton and Daniel. The other 16 are crap. You said Ryan Burton, I mean, I know no, ju- you said Ryan Burton was the best number 35 in the competition. Yeah, because I, I didn't think of Daniel. Well, you should I have thought, thought Daniel. I thought they were all spuds, but then I found one that wasn't. I know Geelong's ones is especially a spud. Okay, I found another decent one. Uh, Riscatelli. He goes all right when he's not injured. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, and we'll find out that Patrick Dangerfield's number 35 and Gary Albert's number 35. Who else is number 35? Anyway, I suppose we'll move on to the match reviews. And, well, we have a Friday night football with the Dogs beating Collingwood in what can be described as a gutsy sort of game. Uh, it, uh, the Western Braves were brave, but Collingwood were gutsy. I think, uh, we've established that. I didn't see the game. Well, I saw the last quarter. I didn't see the rest of the game, but I, I saw plenty of uh, memorable gifts from the evening. And, uh, a lot of mirth. Of, uh, uh, a lot of girth about them. Did the, bon- did the Bond get coaches votes for this game? He apparently did. Uh, from both coaches? I, I don't think they come out till Tuesday, but um, it's, in, it's I, important that he did because I, I don't what, think Nathan upset. Buckley. I don't think Buckley is as much of a sore loser as Brad Scott is, so I, I think Bont will get uh, probably ten votes. Oh well, that's good. Maybe you nine. Wanna, you don't want to upset the Bulldogs. Posters, individual awards are, are important for those who have never seen their team win the ultimate. I don't know. I mean, what sort of game did he have against Collingwood? 26 disposals. He, he was best on ground. Off. He was best okay. on ground. Yeah, that, yeah. that looks like best on ground. So, I mean, if, 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 if he misses out the coaches votes award by like a vote or something, I'll, I'll laugh. Cousin Rory, bring it home, son. Well, yeah, just allow me to be the first to say that if you are going to sit in the front row, you might want to make sure that... Uh, you don't have 200 pounds of flab hanging out of your oh, fucking oh. shirt. He'll, he'll be listening to this one, guys. <laughs> just, just quietly. <laughs> that, that's all right. Oh, he, well. he doesn't know what I look like, so he, he can't find me at Collingwood VFL games. Oh. Uh, trade draft. I mean, you, 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 
<laughs> Dave, whatever, you, you, you can't be flashing your, your guts out at players. No, I mean... And if you keep doing that, you'll end up on a fucking sex offender list, <laughs> which is probably where you belong. Oh. <laughs> any, any hope we can if you... get him in mind is just decimated now. If, if, even if he does listen, like, he probably won't... Uh, Make it to this stage, he'll just um, hear my reference to abortion and go or tears, and then he'll go all Michael Hutchins. <laughs> I, do, I, 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 what? I don't endorse the comments made by cooking and penal brain power in this matter. I, I am neutral. I'm... Yeah. I th- well, what, what's been lost in uh, what's been lost in the cot is that uh, this was actually a very good game, one, one of the best games of the year, and. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure if uh, Morgs were here, she'd be melting a bit about the, uh, the dogs, but you know, good. And how Scott Penderbury's a cunt. Very brave, very brave all around, I thought. Brave and gutsy. Yeah. And then we'll move on to the next game, which was Brisbane beating Carlton. Anyone give a fuck about this game? No, I didn't watch this game, but I was surprised by the result. Same, because I was sitting at the G, watching Hawks play in the it's like, oh, Brisbane's gone out to a long lead, and they nearly threw it away, which is, like, typical Brisbane. Well, yeah, I, I looked at the score after the game, and then I saw the stats, and Carlton had, like, plus 30 inside 50s or something, and they just couldn't score. But, yeah, they couldn't score enough to reel them in. It shows where um, we, we all overestimated Carlton, or certainly Carlton supporters overestimated themselves, I think, when they were sitting... Six wins, five yeah. losses, and now they're, what, six and 14, which is probably about right. I mean, Zorko was probably Brisbane's best player, T20 and Freed. What did Rockcliffe do? 39 touches, oh. five marks, of he did. 12 tackles, two goals, <laughs> five inside 50s, <laughs> one goal assist. You are the biggest fraud. Wait, f- five, in- five inside 50s, you said. That's like five times Had more it. than he normally gets. <laughs> Normally, like, if he has a 38-possession game, he gets one inside 50. Well, I'll put it this way. This is, I'll put it in context. Mitch Robinson got nine inside 50s out of 22 disposals. Well, I guess, and, and I guess they were playing Carlton, who don't have much of a midfield to speak of, yeah. so they could probably just pick the ball up and bolts out of the middle. Anyway, we'll move on to the next game. Uh, oh. Hawthorne beating North. We, it. we we already probably covered this in the guarantees. Yeah, I mean Hawks are just building for September, really. Of they are. I mean North's first quarter let them down big time. Absolutely. Terrible first quarter. Um, second quarter was alright. The third was okay, and then sort of fell away in the last quarter. I mean you know you can't play catch yeah. up football against the good sides, and um, the score in the end probably reflected. Um, yes. I guess from our perspective, first quarter was phenomenal, and um, yeah, then I guess we fell asleep or something. The um, lack of ability to play a full four-quarter effort is uh, concerning, hashtag concerning, heading into finals, I guess, but um, maybe I'd like to believe that we just kind of trolled the competition a bit and uh, let some of the North players like uh, Petrie and Nahas uh, run around and kick a few goals and maybe get themselves another contract, which I think will be will be better for the competition to uh, let North keep Nahas on their list. Or not. I will say I, will say I found we, it we, odd we at the game. We the ball out of bounds on the full at somewhere else, as far as I'm concerned. He did that, he did that like three or four times over the weekend. Yeah, he really... He was Nor, well, he, Hawthorne's best defender. He's been serviceable since he's since his arrival at North, but I think it's time for him to... I mean, I will say, I did find the booing of Ferrito to be weird, but... That was probably from the North supporters. <laughs> like, Why are you still playing? Yeah, well, <laughs> since, since you fucking bring it up, like, I think something that's been lost a little bit in the fact that uh, North uh, have had all these milestones this year with fucking Boomer breaking the record, P3 300... Something that's been lost is the fact that Fritos played 272 games. Wow! And you just you just look at that and think, how? If he goes on next year, he he, he would be the leader of the worst 300 game player to have ever played, without I, question. Well, I think um, I think 
everyone in that club is hoping that he doesn't, just because it would completely invalidate any sense of prestige. Like, we, we all joked, like, when Petrie had his 300, we all joked that 300 doesn't mean much anymore, but, you know, Petrie's at least a... a, a all Australian. You know, he's been consistent over his career, consistently good, had a few great seasons, uh, and, you know, maybe he's not been as good as some of the others, but he probably belongs in that club, but Ferrito would just completely invalidate it. He's just a bland footballer. One you don't think about. I can see it next year. He plays his 300th against St Kilda and he gets a mention on the banner and a, a guard of honour after the game. You know, people will just be scratching their head going, what the fuck is this? Fuck. What is going on? <laughs> if that happens, then that's, fold the that's club. That's a bit like, um, was it Reece Shaw and Amon Buchanan getting a guard of honour when they retired? I mean, that's just, that's silly. So, yeah, Anyway, well, we'll move on to the next game. Surprisingly, West Coast won on the road with Nick Natanui oh, pulling Nick something Nat. out of his ass in the last Nick second. Nat. God, I'm, I wonder what all those people on the Melbourne board were thinking when they were starting to talk about See Jack, Jack Watts, Watts yeah. versus Nick Nat trade, which which one's been better. Um Nick Natanui wins games of football off his own efforts. And he's an all-Australian ruckman forward. There is no doubt that he is so far ahead of Jack Watts. Jack Watts has had like a, a two-month purple patch this year. That's that's Everything else has, has been poo. And Nick Nat's probably... You've got to put things in perspective. Top three ruckman in the comp. Oh... Yeah, maybe. He's certainly miles ahead of... At least Jack this Watts. year. This year? Yeah, because Goldstein and Gorn have probably been better this year. Are you saying that anui has been a top three ruckman this year? Well, rather, over a course of, you know, a few years. What about Sam Jacobs or Mumford or... I didn't think of them. Or, or Segler, eh? Segler. Yeah, can't forget the sex. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as for games, Still, he's just... um, yeah, what a finish. I watched some of it, and it was just good to watch. I mean, GWS are very slick, but West Coast matched them. They did. Um, I watched the last quarter. It was a, it was a good last quarter. Yeah. It probably I mean, there's not, much, has... there's not much more GWS could have really done. I mean, it's just sometimes when a, when a freak athlete gets yeah. the ball and manages to put his boot on it, I mean... Yeah. Just about um, the seas almost kind of parted, and he was good enough to kind of take the space, and he had the body to. Not many other players could have got there and uh, done that, so it's just a cracking finish. It is, and that result essentially does confirm that West Coast will probably face the Dogs in round one because the Dogs have a soft fixture. Uh, well, it br- it brings West Coast back into play yeah. for top four. Like they have two really tough games, but I mean, we did. We, no one expected them to beat GWS, and they did. So, so yeah. all of a sudden, they're they're back into play for top four. Anyway, moving on from that game, yeah, Sydney <laughs> tossed and killed a new arsehole in the second half. Uh, yeah, that was um, you got smacked. Good for first half, not so good second. What happened to this invincible sort of record at the time that I've been hearing about regarding St Kilda? They're not Adelaide. Well, we've only... Yeah. <laughs> We're no Adelaide. You know, you know Adelaide. Well, I mean, you have... Yeah, Sydney's hard, a hard team to beat. And they, they actually do play... This, is, this isn't an Adelaide play well at the Dome call. This is... A Sydney actually do play well at the Dome call because they actually do. You know, They've they, won their last ten, I think. Have they? Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, that wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it's Buddy Taurus' new arsehole again, which happened for the fucking 20th time in a row or some shit like that. You haven't really got anyone to play on him, though. I mean, Delaney's shit. Fisher's not playing. Um, Fisher's Goddard, cooked, Goddard, pretty much. Goddard's not ready. Gilbert's shit. So, I mean... And Carlisle's suspended. Yeah. Well, when, once they get Carlisle next year, okay. then, uh, they could be... Uh, yeah. Is he any good of a defender, or is he just like one of them sort of tall, athletic marking? No, he, I mean, he's a, he's a pretty decent uh, defender. Uh, the fact that 
uh, Hooker and Hurley also turned out to be really decent defenders at Essendon. Probably hurt him, and so they threw him forward, and he was fucking useless as a forward. So, yeah, that's why yeah. it kind of went all south at Essendon. What's this bullshit rumour I'm hearing about Fife going to St Kilda? It started on the St Kilda board. Someone's like, oh, Fife's not signing contract. We should sign him. Then I reckon someone took it seriously. Because I don't believe it for a second. Uh, he's been linked with us as well. And Fuck off. I, well, I could, I could see him fucking leaving <laughs> Fremantle because it, <laughs> he, he, so he doesn't many, like Ross and the game plan. And so he many, doesn't get along with the players. So many neutral fans would wail if he went to Hawthorne. Well, yeah, I mean, had, we have the salary cap space, they weren't but... weren't when we lost Buddy Franklin, were they? Yeah, but you've had all these other good players come to your club because you've been a successful club, and now you're going to get arguably the best midfielder in the competition coming to your club. I mean, that, that would just be like... Anyway, we're going to the next game. Port beat Melbourne. I mean, Melbourne beat Port. I didn't even watch this game, so... No, Melbourne beat Port. Yeah, that's what I said I just, after I the said Port first week. Melbourne. I think you got it right. Yeah, I corrected myself. Way. Yeah. Oh, who cares? I didn't really watch this game. Port was shit. For Melbourne, they, they'll finish. Well, they, well, they, well, they, like, they might the first, actually finish. It's finish the first eight. time Melbourne have won three games in a row in a long, long time. This millennium. Yeah, the DVD. We did it. <laughs> This three, three in a row. Three feet. <laughs> anyway, we'll move on to the next game, which... Well, bad kicking is bad football, and boy, the Gold Coast have joined a pretty exclusive club. Hooray for Essendon, they won. Good for them. So, the conspiracy theory in... Sorry, the conspiracy theorist in me kind of thinks Essendon watched the Brisbane game, and they were like, oh, yeah, uh, shit, we can actually win tomorrow, and we don't have to worry about losing pick one. Or, Or am I reading too much into this? Um... I reckon... Yeah, you're reading too much into this. Probably. Brain power. I mean, bad kicking just cost them. But we don't care about these clubs, so we'll go on to the next yeah, game. Really. Which is can be described as the most Richmond performance oh, in, of this millennium. Cats. That's saying something. Oh, how, how far down were they at three-quarter time? Uh, points? Over, f- yeah, 30-something but points. 35, five. yes. Oh, ouch. That's that's a choke. That is a choke. Fifteen scoring shots to one in the last quarter. <laughs> Jesus, Richmond, what did, what happened? They stopped. Did, did they stop or are Geelong this good? I I think they stopped. And yeah, I, I think knowing, they stopped. Knowing Hardwick's coaching style, which has often been too safe and conservative, I suspect that they played under instruction to try and you know save the game and. They played not to lose in the last quarter, and well, that's not bad. That's not a bad idea in theory. If you have like a thirty-something point lead and you've got like twenty minutes to go in the game, but if oh, they there's there's things you, you can do the though. You gotta you gotta make decisions correctly, and they like just the good, did. The good they just panicked. Do it. Like, they can just chip it around and you know put an extra player back. You know, if you're Richmond, you're gonna uh, probably shit yourself uh, and go, "Oh no, here we go again." Well, that's that's the thing. Like, I they came out probably expecting to be able to do that, and I think once Geelong uh, kicked two goals, so their Richmond are only four goals up. Like, you're still comfortable with that margin, but at that point, they shat themselves. And then they no longer did anything right. Did plus Geelong, is... ha- Geelong has a history of winning these sort of games, coming from behind. Like they, I'll they, put it this way: Rich, R- step in that last quarter. Yeah. Geelong played for one quarter, and that one quarter was enough. I mean, Richmond. I've never seen a team carried by three players as much as Richmond. I mean, Martin, Rewalt, and Rance are carrying that team. Mm. It's uh, a team well, it, it, even just fucking rants. Like, if they didn't have them, they'd be screwed. Because um, Rewalt had an okay game, probably not great. Uh, Martin, Martin was pretty good actually. I thought he was um, better than Dangerfield on the day, so yeah. maybe that'll count for something come well, uh, he, Brownlow well, night. Get, ooh, I still think he's going to lose it by a vote or two. Yeah, Dangerfield will get three votes. He got thirty disposals. Dangerfield was fairly. Non impact, like he was, he was it, average, but because yeah. he's danger field and touches it 30 times, he, he'll get a vote or two, he may even get three. And he Martin, kicked a like Martin match winning assist. Yeah. 
no question. But do the umpires see it that way? Or does reputation play a part? It does play a part. Mm. Absolutely it does. There are some players that, that get votes and some that just don't. You know, you got to be one of those midfielders that looks sexy. Unless you're Matt Prittis. Oh, that's just a fucking joke. I don't know how he ever won a <laughs> Only person to ever have melting on your own board about winning the brown load. Oh, speaking of melting on your own board after winning something... <laughs> Holy shit, the Geelong board after this game was fucking gold. It is legitimately the funniest thing I've ever seen on Big Footy, just because they are known for their infighting, and nothing brings out an infighting like falling over the line in a game you're expected to win, because you had half the, half the posters were saying, we played like shit, sack the coach, and the other side were being like, oh, where, where are all the haters who were criticising us at three-quarter time? Where are all the haters now? And I have never seen such fucking visceral personal attacks on fucking any internet forum that isn't, you know, the really weird ones where... But they're still eating each other, like right? Aaron <laughs> they pretty much are. This has been going on for years. I thought, like, admin were trying to address this. So I keep hearing about the Geelong bo- team board just eating each other like um, um, like carnivores. I don't know, there was a fair bit of eating going along on the Saints board. I mean, Joffa Boy cancelled his account. You got, you, really? So you got like a whole lot of half glass empty and glass half full types and they just don't get along? No, yeah, pretty much. I said, ca- it still was... I, I said carnivores. I, I meant to say um, cannibals. Cannibals? Yeah, the word... Just didn't pop into my brain. I don't. I don't have brain power. Sorry. Here we go. Here's just an example. Everyone who spent that game shitting on our coach and players, go fuck yourself. And someone <laughs> and someone replied to that and saying, "Fuck you." They were appalling for three quarters. The final quarter doesn't magically erase that. But if you're if you've been a relatively successful team like they have. Surely you take the, the glass half empty sort of view. Yeah, we played like crap, but we still won. I mean, if we're in the finals, we, we just know how to play good footy. We'll, we'll get it done. This, this guy this guy has this as his signature, right? So this sums it up for me. I will not, however, step back from admiring Hawthorne's culture, which by every measure is currently <laughs> superior to ours and has been for the last 40 years because of our supporters' refusal to demand more. Refusal to even half acknowledge that Scott's reign hasn't been successful to this point is the very poison that has for too long eaten away at the GFC's ability to truly have and experience greatness. Where was this peanut before they started winning all these flags? <laughs> well, Who, was, which person is was that? His signature then? Well, he's fucking got a join date of 2013. So. <laughs> oh, he's a bandwagon. Of course he is. What a fucker. And I, I can just imagine... Him on the Geelong board with that signature talking about how good fucking Hawthorne's culture is. Oh, they must love him. I bet you all those types, uh, none of them are pre-2007 posters. I bet you in. That's why Teach doesn't go to that board, because they're all fucking nutcases. And some of them actually do believe he's the real Teach. <laughs> it's, it's me from the cheer squad. I didn't know you were on Big Footy 2. <laughs> Anyway, we'll move on to the next game. Uh, Fremantle got smashed by Adelaide. Eddie Betts kicked like six. Rory, uh, Rory Sloan played well. That's about it. Josh Jenkins is the biggest fraud of a forward in any Dur- game. Throw the gooses. Oh, my God. How many did he kick from the goal square in that game? I think he kicked like five or six, and like four of them at least were from the goal square. And it's not just him. that They all do it. I mean, at least Eddie Betts kicks those freakish goals on the boundary line and um, is a really he's, well. He probably is the best forward pocket in the game. But Jenkins, goodness me, he just he kicks all these Joe the Goosey easy over the top goals. And Brisbane were trying to get him over to their club on on big money. He's not that good. Has he resigned now with the Crows? I think yeah, he did. he did like a few weeks ago. Maybe, maybe kind of other teams he put his name out there, like like Dustin Martin did. I think a couple of years ago, he put it, and I think uh, Lewis Taylor did this year. Probably put his name out there looking for like seven fifty eight hundred yeah. a year. 
But that's and... that fight on Lewis uh, Taylor, though. Yeah, but, and I think it might have had the same effect with Jenkins, just because, you know, he's, he's not worth 800 grand a year. And, no way. Um, no way. I think maybe Does, he's ended he's up... Getting paid like... He's ended up probably taking a bit less at Adelaide, maybe because no one else was prepared to pay him more, not even Brisbane. Because other clubs are going to tell him to work hard and actually lead up the ground instead of just sitting in the goal square waiting for easy goals. I mean, it's just completely different from Walker, who you see him do the hard yards. He's a machine. Yep. He's, do not even put Walker in the same sentence as, as Jenkins. Jenkins is just a... He's a leech. He's a parasite. He just gets easy goals. He, he adds nothing to that side. And Subaru, if you're listening no. and you don't like it, you can go stick it. Well, she'll go stick you on her ignore list. Oh, yeah. Boo her. No, nothing of value was lost. No. Yeah. So I'll move on to the next talking point. As we've well said earlier... Brad Scott decided to leave Bonton Pally off the roads and didn't that generate a few melts? Oh, Jesus God, they wailed. They wailed and they wailed the Bulldogs posters. Is it that important to you that Marcus Bonton Pally wins the Coaches Votes Award? I mean, does it... Well, apparently does so. Does it really matter? I mean, I, th- I think he's... I, I mean, I'll say it. I think Brad Scott's done it out of spite. And this this dates back to Bonton Pally opening his, his gob after... The Bulldogs lost to North early in the year. Um, the Thomas suspension one? Oh, yeah, he, he went all out. He, he said it was vicious and uncalled for, and, um, you know, he should see the, the match review panel for what he, he did. And, you know, I mean, when you say things like that about a player, particularly after your team's lost, you know, I mean, uh, that's... Yeah, well, I don't think the win or loss thing has anything to do with it, but there well, is sort of an unwritten player's code. When, and when, he, you have, when you have nothing yeah. to gain by saying that, you're, do, you're doing it just to rubbish a guy's chances at um, the MRP. It's, you know, it looks poor I, on them. Yeah, well, I think the media is to, to blame as well because they, they do kind of always try and bait the players into, like, a response. Well, that, that's but, easy. Um, say, it, it's just I've that, no, yeah, it's just no that um, it's just that player's code aspect to it. But it's always... And snitches get stitches. Yeah, you saw that with, um, what was it, Selwood and Harvey a couple of years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Where... I reckon if Selwood wanted to, he could have got Harvey rubbed out. But yeah. Selwood's a class bloke. He actually went in and gave evidence for Brent Harvey at the at the tribunal. He just he basically said, "I'm I'm a bleeder, guys. I I, I bleed easily. A girlfriend kisses me on the forehead, and I start bleeding." Now, with Marcus Bontempelli, I mean, he he there's no denying that he's an, an exciting, great player to watch. That that's that's not the issue. He just you know. I think I mean there's maybe a bit of because like, he is only 20, uh, so immature and not handled properly in the media training department. I don't know. Put it that way. You're not, you're not, you're not that naive to know what's right and what's wrong. And yeah. what Lindsay Thomas did was nothing more than a, a high tackle. The umpire on the spot didn't deem it to be anything untoward and just gave a free kick for it. You know, it just, it, to me, it just reeks of, oh, we lost, but we can get a little consolation prize by getting this guy rubbed out for a week or two. Well, I mean, that, that's just... To be, that's pe- that's to be fair, that's exactly what Brad Scott did. Like, we lost, but I'll leave this guy out of the coach's vote so he doesn't win the award. Yeah, but he hasn't he hasn't um, costed Marcus Montempelli anything, though. I mean, he's still going to play the following week. I mean, you, you, you stop a guy from playing a game of football, you know, that's... That's, that's the... Well, I mean... It's a yeah. money earner. I mean, you you know. Bonds and Pelly stopped Thomas from winning the Brownlow. I mean, <laughs> he might have won it. <laughs> and Brad Scott stopped him from winning the uh, coaches' award. It's a lot of bullshit also going on along around Hurley still. Oh, yeah. Every that's... club after Hurley. Oh, that makes sense. I mean, he's a quality footballer, and he'll probably slot in in Hawthorne's defence. There's just as every chance as any other club, I would suspect. Yeah. Uh, apparently, like when Robbo was going through the the list of um, who who goes and who stays from Essendon, they said Hurley would be probably the type to leave for money. So I don't think he'd be going to Hawthorne in that case, just because I don't think we could pay what he's ask, asking. But you know, if you were to sell the idea of premierships and things like that, it might like, persuade playing him. in a five p. Well, it wouldn't be his five p, but yeah. Okay, here we go. So here's, here's the story that's come out today. Pies join race for Hurley, 
and it's mentioned uh, Western Bulldogs, Melbourne, St Kilda and Adelaide as the other four clubs in the running. I think we're maybe not that likely. And Morgs has joined us. Hello. Did you win? Yep. How many goals did you score? Oh, I ended up shooting. So I scored um, 16. So you weren't playing in defence? No, because all of our defenders were sick. I mean, all of our goal shooters were sick. Oh, oh. So I'm like a, I'm like a swing man. You're a regular Adam Hunter. From defence to attack. So you guys won? Yes. Hooray. Did you, were you the best on ground or court, I should say? Um, yeah, I think so. I, I, I was getting double teamed at the end. Really? Yeah. So you were the uh, Bontempelli of your netball team. Yeah, the opposition coach isn't, isn't going to give you votes out of spite now. Oh, that's a shame. That's all right. I don't, I don't need the personal accolades. I'm happy to just be a team player. That's good. That's good. There's no I in team. I'm, I'm echoing in your in your microphone, by but, the way. But, but there yeah. is an I in Bontempelli and a me. There's me. Well, an I and a me. Yeah, he's fucking selfish, that guy. Anyway, I suppose we'll move on to Fred of the Week. Um. Oh, yeah. Roko. I would say I like the uh, the Sue's Fred was also very good. There's was a there voice a new, was, Fred. It, was there a new one made, or were we talking about the Divi Blues one? The Divi Blues one, as well as the one on Limbo Club. We can't, me- well, We're, we can't not put yeah. on that on that forum. Um, is the boys' thread was just like, what the fuck? The um, googling images of little boys. Yeah. yeah, that was just odd. Spankers was very weird. Where I, is I, uh, where is Lacked Punch? Yeah, he said he was coming on. He was told nine thirty. The, 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 the filthy Benny that he is. He welched on us. Oh, let's give him Have a you- bat. Yeah, there's been there's been a lot of like weird threads this week. Like there was one on the there was one on the uh, main board entitled the uh, the Matt Shervingtons of the AFL, and uh, that took a weird turn fast. <laughs> cough, Nahas, cough. <laughs> I just want to give it to Roko Fred. Yeah, the Roko thread was good. I mean, I, the questions I got, uh, well, the answers I got were a bit fence sitting, but the the smackdown he gave to Rory was. <laughs> That was funny, and that got a lot of Essence supporters very, very happy. And the uh, the one given out to the the Swan supporter who called him out uh, for making up all his stories, and then Roko just delivers a uh, smackdown and calls him a 12-year-old child. It's brilliant. Was it Ashton Agar who posted that? Sadly, no, but he probably would have cried and cancelled his count if it was. Who, Royals? <laughs> I don't think Royals is 12 years old. He's 112 if you, if you believe what he said. <laughs> Back in my day. So anyway, we'll move on to you. That was thread of the week. Yeah. yeah. Honor, honorable mention to the fucking Geelong team board autopsy thread. Oh, and the Richmond board. The Richmond game day thread. Oh, if you want to laugh. And well, we'll move on to... They knew it was coming, but it was so yeah. good. Yeah. Well, we'll move on to Flog of the Week. Oh, it has to be tire boys. Like, like it, even, even I wanted to fucking nominate someone else but after seeing his efforts this week wow I said, but at least he's still fronted up so I've got to give him positives there no we don't the, I, was, the, I said last week I was happy to vote for Smasher every week and I think I'll stick to that line well that King Cold yeah, he's pretty bad um fucking Wild Bill from North it's just Oh, he's been like the two shit fights that I've actually noticed. The the dogs north one is fucking out of control. That's getting fucking... weird. We we're getting a lot of bulldogs posters posting on the north board like um, flies to a or moth to a light. They're all just sort of buzzing around on our board for whatever reason. I don't know why, but Brad Scott has rustled their Jimmy's that well. What uh, what because of the votes? Yes. Oh, come on, guys, get over it. It's not yeah, about so, individuals. So, but, yeah, well, it's it's two things. It's between the fucking vote thing and the Bontempelli thing. And on the other side, you've got the dogs supporters trolling north because of how their season's going at the moment. And that shit fight has gotten, like, West Horsham territory. It's that fucking bad that you just don't want to look. How, the, how well are they going? They've had, like, one extra win or maybe two extra wins. The club hasn't won a premiership since the dinosaurs. What have they got on to, to, to be going on about? And that's why it's a fucking horrible shit fight. It's like the South Australian It's a terrible clubs. shit fight. It, it's, it's like, you know, Port trying to rile up Adelaide fans with talk of their fucking 37 Sample premierships. It's... The, the Port supporters get a laugh that's, out of it, but every... Like, 16 other like, teams just go, no, face palm. It's kind of like Adolf Hitler having an argument with Mother Teresa saying that he's a better bloke 
than she is a person. I I wouldn't put it in those terms exactly. <laughs> I would. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think the dogs do equate to being Hitler. Yeah, I agree. No, this 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 shit fight is two sided, so it's more like fucking. It's, um, no. it, it's more like fucking Hitler arguing with say, I don't know. Daily? Um. Jeffrey Dahmer about who yeah. was fucking nicer to be around. I will say it's quite funny how Mandaclay and who has this alias Boris Town. He must be really confused, which necessitated someone making probably the best troll account I've seen, and it got banned. Fucking mods. I hate mods. Yeah. No, I hate we, mods. We, sh- we shouldn't have mods on people. No. We, sh- we should just have a like a a a gut feel sort of system where oh you deserve a red card so you're just gonna have one. Just be a voting system. A voting system, like a big brother like, thing. Like Survivor, yeah. You, you, you're voted off the forum. Actually, no, I got I got another two vlogs who should be mentioned. I got the Dr. Giro and Divi Blues. Mm-hmm. Tottenham and Man City are fucking minnows. Now shut the fuck up. You're in the big boy league now. Uh, I'd, I'd like to I've nominate Vox to Boyd again. Back to backs for Bont to Boyd because good old posted <laughs> the gif of trade draft and he goes, you know who that guy is on Big Footy, right? <laughs> yes, Cap, we all know who that is. You stupid fucking idiot. Wow. <laughs> Captain Obvious, wow. Oh, wow. And then good old goes, that guy's on Big Footy, get out of here, really? <laughs> Oh, fucking uh, that was well played. And yeah, I've, well, speaking on the fucking mod hate train that Dan's on, I've got a fucking another nomination just because I've I've engaged the ignore button, and and unlike somewhat unlike some people like on the bay who get offended by you know talking about people like Subaru here, get offended, put that poster on ignore, it's weak. But I finally like had to fucking ignore someone and it's just out of spite because they used to be a mod and I couldn't fucking ignore their shit before and now I'm doing it just because I can because they're no longer a mod. Forward press. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh god, what a dingbat he was as a moderator. Jesus Christ. That man, or girl, or boy, had a magical quota of things that he had to do within a day in terms of uh, cli- banning people, banning people, closing threads. Um, moving threads, deleting posts, um, and he was he was like a like a wannabe policeman on on big footy. It was so it was annoying. The, it was the hall monitor mentality. 100%. Oh yeah, he was Cartman. Absolutely. <laughs> Respect my authority. Respect my authority. Well, speaking of hall monitors, fucking idiot boy dogs who I had to show ignored content just so I understood what Starman was talking about. For cracking the shit in the spanker's thread and wanting it to be removed. Fuck off. Some people are just not fun. Why are you even on here? Well, I, well, I asked uh, Cookson, Cookson if we can get him on, but apparently not. I, I, I said we, it, we're better off having him on when you're on from the start, Morgan. Oh, instead of ambushing me with him being here later. Yeah. Well, that, well, that's, that was my whole fucking pitch. Yeah, P- Penal wanted to throw you under the bus. Uh, he... I thought you'd be the one wanting to throw someone under a bus down with your hatred of buses, but I appreciate you sticking up for me. Yes, I hate buses. And uh, the other fucking shit fight I've noticed that's out of control is the weird one, Melbourne and Essendon, and it's gone crazy on the main... Oh, is that a... Yeah, Why would they be... Is that about, fight? like... No, it's an absolute yes. crazy shit fight just because now that Melbourne are going so, like, well... It looks like they're going to miss finals based on the fact that they lost to Essendon. And aren't the Essendon supporters just rubbing it in? And the Melbourne supporters are just so fucking butthurt and defensive about it. The fact that they lost to Essendon and they're going to miss finals because of it. It's great. I want to add another thing as well. That Jade poster, he's like, oh, essentially had a little troll for it saying, oh, Melbourne supporters essentially overrate their players. And it's like, this is coming from Essendon supporters. Yeah, okay. This guy gets a fucking retrospective Flog of the Week nomination because I remember earlier in the year he started a thread, players at your club who would get a game for any team in the AFL, and then he threw up, like, from Essendon, there are a couple of reasonable ones that you could throw up, like, say, Hurley or someone, but no. What was the first name he goes to? Brent fucking Stanton. What? He he wouldn't even get a game in his own club. They fucking boo him themselves. 
All he does is run around and not kick the ball well. I mean, Tom Rock lives better he, than he's that. He's a Diet Coke version of Tom Rock, basically. He's a, he's a Coca-Cola life version. Like that awful green Coke. He, he's played uh, 250 games as well, like, hasn't he? Or is he a member of the Michael Ferrito Club of Awesomeness? He needs to be a member of the Anthony Rock Club. <laughs> Worth 200 damage of all time. He's just so bland. And that Jade guy is like, fuck, you get idea he's too gooey about his own team. Mm. I, like, I know that we nominated Tingy for Fall of the Week, but H2F needs to go in there too. Their little flinging shit at each other in that thread was so incredibly pathetic. And then for them both to turn around to and apologise and be like, I love you, man, at the end, I was like, vomit. You fucking yeah, wait. Now, just kiss each other now. Just kiss each other's dicks, you're annoying me. We get it, you're both virgins. Just fuck each other. <laughs> the random apology was the best bit of the thread. Shut up and I'll stop laughing. It didn't need that. What thread was this? It was a boy's thread when they both started apologising oh. to each other. But no, I'm more sorry. No, I'm more sorry. Oh, and NL's there. Can I, can I ask him a question? Oh, sure. What was for dinner tonight? Uh, oh, we had uh, fish and chips, actually. Oh, that's that's right. Good stuff. Did the water boy do a good enough job to get a feed? Yes. No, this was... We had fish and chips before. Yeah. Oh, so you, you played on... Lucky you didn't vomit up your food. But, 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 but don't you normally only have dinner at, like, 12 o'clock? Yeah, but... I because I started work early this morning, um, when um, NL finished uni, we went to the beach and had fish and chips at the beach. Oh, because oh, the oh. sun came out in Melbourne today, so we had to celebrate that. I, I was just getting worried because I didn't hear any cooking noises in the background, so I thought, like, I might have oh. forgotten to eat, cook, eat food and stuff no. and die. And I didn't I'll want make, that to happen, obviously. I'll make him some dim sims later. Because right. he, like, he likes dim sims, so he can have some of them later. Anyway, West Coast Hawthorne tips. Oh. Go. Um. Don't cough, it hurts my ears. <laughs> yeah, know, know your place, water boy. Um, <laughs> Hawthorne. Hawthorne. Yeah, Hawthorne 30. Yeah, well, six six weeks ago I would have said um, easy win to us, but. Is Ryan Burke going to keep his spot on the side, Penal? I think he deserves to. Let's hope there's he does. No, there's no one else. To, is Popolo supposed to come back in? He, he played on. Uh, he played. Did he play? Us, yeah. I didn't even notice him. Okay. Um, yeah, but, um, yeah, I would have said uh, we should get an easy win a couple weeks ago, but West Coast have Dad Nui back, and their midfield looks good for the first time all year. So, I don't know, maybe it'll be close. I'm tipping Hawks by uh, three points. I think the re- the real battle this game won't be on the scoreboard, but it'll be whoever out of Puapolo and Shui can get more goals from high tackle free kicks. <laughs> So I take it Sicily isn't behind that. Oh, he'll, he'll be back, but I think uh, we'll let Poopolo have centre stage. He's just uh, got a little more experience in the uh, the ducking wars. Right. I'm going for West Coast. Where is it? West Coast. Subi. Yeah, West Coast. You're not even on. <laughs> Did NL just give a tip? Yes. Is, is he allowed to do that? No, I just told him. Oh, I did. I'm going to mute it every time he can. So early, he can. Early this, year, this year, you you were sensitive about the way Morgan was was tipping, and now you're no, no, because she changed, <laughs> no, because she changed her mind. How yeah, dare I? Fucking hell. Why can't people oh, change, change their mind? Why can't people change their mind? No, no. no you no. said I was being fake. Yeah, no, she didn't change her mind. She just she said one thing here and the other thing to me. I think That's maybe I lied to you. He yeah. just does that all the time. He has his flog pass tips, and then he has his big footy tips, and we caught him out for it. I'm, I'm just, just calling everyone out. What? Oh, <laughs> all right. Fucking call out. It's not the water boy throwing his water bottle away and grabbing the footy and kicking a goal. I mean, it's... Know your role. No, know, know your role. Know your role and shut your mouth. <laughs> well, we'll go on to the next game. North Melbourne versus Sydney down in Tassie. Oh, based on the scores we've been producing the last two weeks, I don't think we'll even get close to winning. I'm very, I'm even reluctant to even tip this game. I think Sydney, Josh, because Sydney haven't 
it, when the conditions are a bit shit, Sydney aren't that good. It might good. be close because North does tend to play pretty good football down there, but it won't be enough. Well, yeah, no, just on the fucking weather thing, I think in the games that they played this year, I think if it like starts raining, then Sydney only kick about 80 points but the problem is they usually in the same conditions restrict their opponents to like 40 just like Dan mentioned North haven't scored like if the weather is shit I could see a really really low score from North I'll tip North okay and Al <laughs> yeah. you, you might as well tip the whole round then Al now that you've started yeah, well, I'll say it again then fuck you I, I said North <sighs> Sydney uh... yeah we're, we're, yep. and we're going to take good either <laughs> Yeah, this is, I think, our best chance to win out of the last, even counting the last few weeks. I'm, I'm more confident about this than I was against Hawthorne. Based on what? Based on. Based on the fact Sydney don't have a guy named Brian Burton in their team, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Because Spuds usually play well against us. Did they? Did he win the Sam Perry Spud Shield? Or? Um, I'm trying to think who won that. Is that a thing? No, it's this. a thing in my head because every week I notice, every week I crack the shits at some player who I consider a spark who just plays out in against us. Oh, only against like, North. Like Jamie Cripps or some shit like that. They just, they just bomb up. And... Anyone else care about NL's life story? No, I don't. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, well, he, he's <laughs> got a valid point. Like, I, I notice uh, for, against us, it's fucking Josh Hill from West Coast. Who always seems to yeah. kick like oh, four yeah. goals against us, but turns to yeah, shit not, against yeah. every other team. Actually, I think Brad Hill played better than he usually does against us on Saturday, so I might have to give it to him. No, win. no, no, no. Brad Brad Hill always plays this well. Are you listening, Fremantle? He's definitely worth pick pick three or Nat Five. <laughs> he, he's always this good. Well, going to the next game, we have Richmond versus St Kilda at the MCG. Um, my well, yeah, I've gone St Kilda. I, I, Richmond I want are just Kilda gone. To win, but I don't think I don't think they will. Oh fuck I'm, it, I'll just tip St Kilda. I'm gonna go with uh, Richmond to be 75 points up with 15 minutes to go, <laughs> and St Kilda to win. I think St Kilda are gonna shit it in. Can you one oh, word tip, please? No stories. No, I, I think no stories. I think St Kilda will win by enough that they'll be back into top eight calculations by the end of the week. Oh moment. my god. Bloody Damien Hardwick on the couch. Quote, I personally think we'll, we'll, be, we'll be quick to bounce back. I think we'll be in the finals next year. You just won't be there, Damien. Yeah, they might be in the finals, but you sure as hell won't be there. Well, yeah. maybe we'll be there in the boards. So... No he won't be there next year if they're not in the finals. He's just... He's just written his own fucking death warrant. So, um... How got it in... So, Kilda are 17% behind North NL. <laughs> no chance. to win by about 20 goals. I don't think it'll happen. So, 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 so is that to just get within, like, striking range? So, say they get back to within, like, 10% or 5%. Could they do that? That's... That's so we can get... Enough goals to smash Brisbane by about 150 uh-huh. points yeah. next we week. We would have to get slaughtered oh. by Sydney and GWS, though. Yeah, that's true. Oh. And Melbourne would need to lose as well. Yeah. Oh, I, so you mean I, the... I just want another team to be in that reckoning so that everyone talks them up more. I love it. It's, it's Melbourne this week. It was mm. St Kilda last week. If St Kilda could get back into that, that and, and Melbourne piss off from it and then change again next week, that would be great. Maybe you know what? I, you know what? I, you know what I've noticed. NL has been on here for like ten minutes, and he has said more in ten minutes than we've said anything in the, in the last hour and a half. Oh no! See, you shut up. You should bring your own laptop anyway. over to our place, go into another room, just just come on and be on, on a more official hey, capacity. Here's here's the reverse paddles. Yeah. Yeah, he never tells well, lies. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm the, yeah that too. I'm the so, so, so I, I, I did, I did the math right, and for St Kilda to jump north, like they have to win their last two games by an average of seventy-five, and North have to lose their last two by the same margin, roughly. That's not happening. It, it's not happening, but it very much can. 
No, I, I just hope it stays alive for as long as possible. And then Why? tails it must. Because uh, uh, they'll just be... They'll be getting so excited, they'll be frothing at the mouth, and then in the last round, at the last minute, it won't happen. And it'll be like an air round of a ball. Do you like it? Yeah, it's Brisbane. But it, but, it, but it doesn't matter what I think. Some people just want to watch the world burn. Are you sure? Because you've been speaking non-stop for 20 minutes. <laughs> but that's... Just shut up. I like letting, hey, well, letting the to... air out of the balloon. I wish someone had let the air in the balloon. It'll be like a Zephyr. Just oh, come Zephyr. Fly away, oh my Zephyr. We're fucking busy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, we've got to the next game, Western Sydney versus Fremantle in Western Sydney. Uh, I'm not going to ask for a tip. How big of a margin do you think Sydney will win by, well, Western Sydney? Um, well, I don't know, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're, you're, you're probably right. They, they probably will win by a big margin, but this, I mean, this, who cares? That went by a fuck off, Jose. Mm-hmm. Oh. Jose sized eyebrow. Northern Lights, do you have an analysis for this game that you'd like to share <laughs> is this, with? Is this in Perth or Sydney? No, it's Sydney. Sydney. Okay. Oh, well, tell us everything you heard about Sydney. Well, no, they, <laughs> oh, they, they are on the rebound, aren't they? So, yeah, this is, this is very much a... Even I can't say much about this game. No, you've got heaps to say. Go on. <laughs> oh, we, we got the best in a dower affair. They don't play dower football, you dickhead. Yes, they do. Man. No one fucking cares about them. I do. Dower. Two dower clubs. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Such a <random> lunatic. <laughs> Hopefully the next game that I analyse you have a bit more to talk about. This was disappointing. Well, I doubt that. It's Collingwood versus Gold Coast. Uh, I think Collingwood's yeah, gonna win. Oh, sorry, you have to go last. Who <laughs> <laughs> thinks he's the fucking boss now? Everyone else, tip on going last. You're a fucking. <laughs> I'm tipping what? Collingwood. Uh. I don't know why I've got the chicken chicken dance song in my head at the moment. Um, yeah, Collingwood. I think. Wait, yeah, off Collingwood. <laughs> and Al. Oh, yes, 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 everyone has. <laughs> yeah, Collingwood. Oh, that's it. Oh, well, again. Say Dower again. No, this won't be Dower. Um, it'll be a pretty fast-paced game, you'd say. But, yeah, largely in the scheme of things, not that important. But it's fucking important to me. You, anyway, we're we'll going to the mean, next well, game. I yeah, I think the round's tailed off. <laughs> you think it was... I've well, got the next... Off. Yeah. Oh, started, like a ha- started like a house on fire. <laughs> we're asking too much of the water boy, remember? <laughs> well, we're going with the next game. Port Adelaide versus Adelaide. Uh... Adelaide to win. <sighs> Yeah, Adelaide. Nobody outside of West Horsham to care. Yeah, Not Adelaide. Really. No. Adelaide easily in the showdown. How many easy goals is Josh Jenkins going to kick in this game? Against <laughs> fucking Port's undersized defence? Eight. God, no. Yeah, fraud footballer. Everyone gone? Oh, shut up, dickhead. Um, Adelaide. I'll go with Port. They'll, they'll whiff for this. And they'll... And they'll get me a good win for Margin Maney. What? 
support. Well, for the, the, the lesser team usually lifts for the showdown. Isn't that right? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, so, I don't know. Not a showdown, it's a hoedown. Oh, yeah, what, what's it? Yeah, showdown. <laughs> Not a derby. Yeah, that's what I'm or saying. a derby. Derby. Oh, we'll have a gone to the next game. Carlton versus Melbourne at the MCG. And I'm going D's. I mean, yeah, D's. Uh, Carlton, I'm tipping. Are you really going to tip a team that just lost to Brisbane? Um, yes, I am. They're going to bounce back. And got destroyed two weeks ago as well. Yes. I'm not. Penal, your tip. <laughs> Melbourne, oh, they'll you. keep the finals rice alive. I miss the boss. <laughs> are they king or? <laughs> what are they serving with the rice, Penal? Um, what do they eat up in the mountains? Deer, elk? Mm, elk and rice. Sounds very rice to me. <laughs> I got <love> Melbourne. <clears throat> Yes, Melbourne. Believe, everyone. Believe. Are you pissed, Northern Lights? <laughs> <laughs> what was in the water bottle? <laughs> Probably some LSD, I would assume. Have you been doing lines and... off somebody's ass again? <laughs> again? What? What did you say last night? Well, we'll move on to next. Well, the next game: Brisbane versus Geelong cats, at the Gabba. Cats, 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 cats. Uh, cats. Geelong by a lot. I would like to be able to tip Brisbane, but they're shit. Geelong are mentally weak, so they will just stumble over the line against Brisbane. Yeah, Pussycats by 15. Yeah. And last game, which is on a very appropriate time slot, Essendon versus the Dogs. Uh, dogs. Dogs. Unfortunately, Kramer is not playing to be able to outscore Essendon again. But, um... Wasn't there a rumour... Wasn't well, Not a rumour, but an article floating around that he's going to be eligible to be to play for the, in the finals and he was training? And that the, do- the dogs yeah. were considering picking him? Yeah. I don't know how they could, though. It's because the band ends yeah, like... I know the band's um, going to be finished, but he's got no form. At all, he hasn't been able to play any sort of football whatsoever. That's still <laughs> where you want to be able to fucking pick him. Over well, that's Boyd. true. When you have Tom Boyd in your fucking club, who makes twenty grand off every touch he makes, um, yeah, there might be some merit having him in the side. Uh, yeah. I have to pick the Bulldogs, but it hurts. Bulldogs. Yeah. Oh, God, so dogs. Be a fucking life story to get. Because now the mighty have fallen. <laughs> because the, the, the games before had a bit riding on it. These ones towards the end. Yeah. Oh, really sorry. Riding on those old old Travis that. Old let him know how disappointed you are in his switch stream. What's that? Yeah. There's nothing really riding on those other games. The eight's pretty much set. Oh, I forgot what the game for already. So, <laughs> oh no, there was a bit. There was a bit riding on the North Sydney game. Yes, that's what he's talking about. The other ones, fucking hell, catch up. So, uh... mm-hmm. I think it's time for food. <laughs> anyway, this has been the vlogcast for round twenty-two. Hosting is Cookie. They're joining, as always, is Dan. Yeah. After a loss, he's dead. I've been fronting up for like the last four or five weeks, and we've only won like one game. 
I mean, as always, after a loss, because you are here. Rain, hell, or... So, you're in... so the whole someone doing a Dan thing is, is diminished now. Is, is that right? That's right. It's called doing a you don't know Jack, who <laughs> only comes on after a win. That's right. Yeah. If, I, if, I, if you've I, ever I, seen I, you don't know Jack after a loss, uh, oh, you're a liar. <laughs> That's as rare as the fucking Bigfoot. <laughs> Well, that doesn't really make sense. They've won, like, the last three or four games in a row, haven't they? I didn't say he's here every time they win. I said he's never here when they lose. He was here. Ah, uh, okay. Never. 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 Also, also joining us, as you can hear, is the one and only Rain Power. I, I just want to say that uh, Dan is an ornament to the Flogcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, four weeks ago. That joke wasn't even funny then. <laughs> Also joining us is the anti-Tom Boyd, a forward who can score goals, Morgan Ashley. Say well, Floggos. And, well, we're ready to add another chapter to his life story, Northern Lights. Yeah, hooray for what a boy. <laughs> what a boy. <laughs> Bobby Boucher Thanks, thanks for... <laughs> Thanks for listening. See you next week. Off <laughs> <laughs> you saying so long, farewell. Off you to saying goodbye. Oh, when do we get pedals yeah, on here? Fuck The hills are alive. No, they're not. The you know, if, if, if I was... If I was the director of that scene, I would have Hitler in a tank coming over the mountains with all these other Nazis <laughs> chasing crawl <Fraulein> over <laughs> I am a hell of a lonely goat. You don't have to sing every song in that bloody music. I only know this one. Red, <laughs> <laughs>